Welcome to today's session. I want to remind everyone that as we're here at FairCon 2020, you can engage with all of our speakers by using the chat feature that's available to you here in our virtual conference platform. Our upcoming session is entitled Updates to the, FAIR, to the Open FAIR Standards. This is facilitated and, and led by John Lindford. He is the forum director of the Security Forum and Open Trusted Technology Forum. That's O-F-O-T-T-F -T -T of the Open Group. John Lindford will present on updates to the open fair body of knowledge. Prior to joining the open group in June of 2019, John worked as a lecturer for San Jose State University um, in economics. John is open fair certified and was the lead author of the open fair risk analysis process guide, which some of you probably have used if you've been studying for your certification. This offers best practices for performing an open fair risk analysis with the intent to help risk analysts understand how to apply open fair risk analysis methodology. Enjoy the session. Thank you very much for that intro, Latrell. So yeah, as you just heard, my name is John Linford. I am the forum director for the Open Group Security Forum and Open Trusted Technology Forum. And today I'm going to be speaking about updates to the open fair standard and next steps that will happen to the Open Fair Certification Program. As I'm going through my presentation, please do feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A box. And with that, let's get going. All right. So as the trail just told you, my name is John Linford. I am the Forum Director of the Open Group Security Forum and Open Trusted Technology Forum. Today, I'm going to be speaking about updates to the Open Fair Standard and next steps in getting the certification program updated. So first things first, a little bit about the background of, or the overview of my presentation. So I'll start with a little bit about the background of the open group and the security forum's role within it, before looking at some of the high level changes to the open fair body of knowledge, before we go into some specific revisions for the open group risk analysis standard, ORA, and the open group risk taxonomy standard, ORT, which comprise the open fair body of knowledge. We'll then look at some consistency revisions that we made across both of these documents before we finally look at adding some rigor to the open fair standard and the next steps in the certification program. First things first then, a little bit of background about the open group. The open group is a global consortium and we are an international vendor and technology neutral organization that other organizations rely on to lead the development of technology standards and certifications. Our goal is to provide them with access to key industry peers, suppliers, and best practices. We also have the vision to, of boundaryless information flow achieved through global interoperability in a secure, reliable, and timely manner. We have more than now 750 member organizations, as we said, all across the globe, making up a diverse membership of customers, systems and solution suppliers, tool vendors, integrators, consultants, and academics and researchers from various industries. The Security Forum. So the Security Forum is also a vendor neutral environment where members can obtain relevant knowledge about industry standards and best practices, exert influence over these standards and best practices by collaborating and helping develop and publish them, grow professionally in their work with these things, and then of course network with a world-class community of experts and peers. Members of the Security Forum tend to be security and risk generalist practitioners who have a goal of producing general purpose reusable intellectual property. Over the last few years, this intellectual property has focused on open, fair, and quantitative risk analysis, and more recently in zero trust and security architecture. It is the Open Group Security Forum that manages and updates the open, fair, of course, factor analysis of information risk, body of knowledge, or you'll see this abbreviated as BOK. Before we dive into these high level changes, a little bit of background about how these documents were originally developed. We had the Open Group Risk Taxonomy Standard, ORT, come about first. From that document, then we developed the Open Group Risk Analysis document. And then based on developing that document, ORT was updated to version two. 
So they were never really developed side by side until this time round with this update. So we made a very concerted and deliberate effort this time round to make sure that changes made to one document were made consistently in the other document. We also made a very deliberate effort to avoid any redundancy or repetition between the two documents that had previously sort of been all throughout both of them. So first things first then, high level change in ORA. We removed the confidence level in the most likely value. Instead, we're now emphasizing the choice of distribution made by the analyst. What this means is that the analyst can better model what they think they know about the risk scenario that they're analyzing by picking the distribution that best models those results. We don't provide guidance on which distribution is best, and OpenFAIR does remain distribution agnostic, but this may be a PERT distribution or a Poisson distribution. It's really going to depend on the knowledge of that analyst. We then also take some inspiration from the Open Fair Risk Analysis Process Guide and decompose the loss scenario step by step, going from contact event all of the way through to the end of our secondary loss event and explain it utilizing some accompanying figures. I actually include that overall final composition image at the very end that's developed step by step. So it's gonna look a little bit overwhelming, but it is prevented, or presented slowly rather than altogether in the document. One of the other really cool additions that we think it's really cool that we added to ORA is incorporating the NIST CSF5 functions, particularly their color scheme into that overall final summary image of that loss scenario decomposition. So we also made an effort this time around showing how OpenFAIR plays nicely with other risk assessment or risk analysis frameworks. ORT then. One of the first things that we realized in revising ORT was that the accomplish assigned mission that we had as an action for a threat agent could apply to absolutely anything that threat agent was doing. So whether that was access or deny access or modify, any of those things could have been the assigned mission of the threat agent. So we removed it as a specific action, but we included still a note that any of those actions could still be the assigned mission of the threat agent. We also focused on revising some terms just for clarity so that somebody reading these documents for the first time over can get sort of easier understanding. So one of these was renaming the external loss factor detection to external party detection. So we know the primary stakeholder has to have detected the loss event. If you can't detect the loss event, then how on earth can you analyze it? So we renamed this to external party detection to make it clear immediately that we're referring to our secondary stakeholders. We also then took input from industry, which uses due diligence for other purposes. So we renamed that organizational loss factor to reasonable care. So again, trying to avoid any possible confusion there. Perhaps the best thing though that we did in ORT was add summary tables to the end of both the loss event frequency section and the loss magnitude section, providing de definitions for each of those terms and the units of measure. So this should allow an open fair risk analyst to immediately glance through these documents, find the summary tables and immediately get clarity for what they're looking for. Across both documents then, we removed that previous quantitative example that was based on qualitative scales and heat maps that were sort of a little bit confusing and not particularly consistent between the two documents. It was interspersed throughout all of ORA, so we were trying to give a standard and an example at the same time, which was confusing, and was its own section in ORT, which didn't make the most sense in a taxonomy standard. So instead, we're going to be developing those in their own separate publication that I'll talk about a little bit later on. We also made an extremely concerted and deliberate effort to ensure that the terms and definitions in both ORA and in ORT were consistently defined and clarified. So again, part of this was avoiding repetition and redundancy, but we also ended up adding a glossary section just right at the very beginning rather than right at the end, again, to aid that risk analyst in immediately finding and getting clarity for those definitions and terms. Our specific revisions to ORA then to get it from version one to version two. 
Well, as I hinted at, we substantially reorganized this entire document. By shifting that glossary right to the beginning, that meant that we could sort of refocus the rest of the document onto being more relevant more quickly. So this allowed us to present that risk analysis approach first and foremost, and clarify that OpenFAIR is a risk analysis standard, not a risk assessment standard. This will be complemented by revisions that we made in ORT that show that the OpenFAIR risk analysis standard fits into other risk analysis frameworks. We were also then able to provide immediate clarity for the distinction between assessment and analysis. We also then took the opportunity to refine many of the fundamental concepts in the risk analysis standard. So we were able to more clearly distinguish between accuracy and precision, as well as emphasize the value of objective measurements as opposed to subjective measurements for risk analysis, particularly quantitative risk analysis. We also then finally provided a definition for estimates and estimation, and we made an emphasis on using usefully precise estimates. So in other words, focusing on estimates that are going to allow your decision maker to make a decision without running into diminishing returns, trying to find those estimates and without giving a false air of accuracy because of how narrow those estimates are, how precise they are artificially. We did add some additional calibration discussion in ORA as well, though of course we still rely heavily on the excellent work from Doug Hubbard in this area. One of the other things we did then was align around terminology of most likely value. Previously, we kind of bounced back and forth between most likely value and mode. This time around, we focus on most likely value with clarity that this is going to be the peak of the distribution that the analyst chooses, which may or may not end up being the mode. So we align on most likely value, minimum and maximum values for presenting open fair results. As I said earlier then, we also took that similar approach to the Open Fair Risk Analysis Process Guide published a couple of years ago. What this means is that we really focused on step-by-step -step loss scenario decomposition. So we were able to highlight immediately those key components that the risk analyst needs in order to go about doing the risk analysis in the first place. These of course being your primary stakeholder, your asset, your threat agent or threat community, the threat event, and of course then your loss event. In that area, we also provide a little bit of guidance on some key characteristics that threat agents or threat communities might share, just to make it a little bit easier for the risk analyst to immediately identify them. Throughout our risk analysis standard as well then, we decompose our loss scenario, first with our loss event frequency side of things. So first we present the loss scenario, and then we provide that top-down approach to decomposing your loss event frequency, providing regular reminders that how far down the risk taxonomy you go is going to depend upon the purpose of the analysis and the requirements of your decision maker. We do this so that the risk analyst doesn't think they need to do absolutely everything in the risk taxonomy, but instead should only focus on those areas that are going to be relevant for the analysis as it's being done. On the loss magnitude side of things, we deliberately separate out primary loss magnitude and secondary loss magnitude. Previously under loss magnitude, we had primary loss and secondary loss. Now under primary loss, we have our primary loss magnitude and our secondary loss. This allowed us then to get rid of the concepts of primary risk and secondary risk. So now we just have our primary loss and primary loss events and our secondary loss and secondary loss events all of which roll up to that single risk concept of probable frequency and probable magnitude of future loss. We then also decided to separate out the discussion around controls and present these in their own entire section. So we were finally able to give our control section really the room that it needed in order to be developed properly and in order to discuss the impact of modeling the effects of controls on your open fair risk analysis. One of the other great things that we did then was add an entire section on uh, risk analysis quality considerations. So in here is where we had that previous information about your unstable and fragile risk qualifiers. We also include information here on documenting your rationale and assumptions and the benefits of doing so. 
we advise in this section against using ordinal scales since they may or may not be defined consistently even within an organization, but particularly between organizations. And then they also rely on ranges that your open fair risk analysis may not fit nicely into. So for instance, if you have expected loss magnitude of between $20 million and $60 million in a given year, but you have an ordinal scale that says a three is between $40 million and $70 million, do you classify that loss magnitude as a two or a three? So we advise against doing that. We also include some information on troubleshooting, including going back and double checking those now well-documented rationale and assumptions, and potentially even running multiple analyses with some small tweaks to see if there really are some differences based on those small tweaks. We can see here then that final image. So this is probably way too much information at once. Rest assured that within the risk analysis standard, we do break this down step by step, first presenting that top blue box of the loss scenario, which we deliberately specify is always from the perspective of the primary stakeholder. Then we break it down for our loss event frequency side of things, going from our contact event to threat event to loss event. And then we sort of ignore the loss event frequency and look at the loss magnitude side of things going from our loss event to secondary loss event with those different loss forms. Then finally, all together at the very end, we pull it all back together and incorporate the NIST CSF5 functions and their color scheme to show just how well these work together. So what are our changes, specific revisions to ORT to get it from version two to vision, version three? Well, first and foremost, we connect that risk management model at the beginning of the document that's still there after the glossary that's been shifted forward to connect it to ISO guide 73. So we're able to show that the open and fair risk analysis fits within this risk management model. We also deliberately introduce and define our definition for risk right from the very beginning. This allows us to show that an open fair risk focuses just on loss. We don't consider that benefit or opportunity side of things. So this makes it a little bit easier in discussing risk. You know you're always going to be looking at a loss side of things, which should make it easier to then have those discussions with decision makers. We also finally clarified something that had been implicit within the standard before, and that's that these open fair risk factors are assumed to be independently identically distributed. While we'd never provided this specific clarification before, it had been an underlying assumption that had sort of been prevalent throughout. So this time around, we made sure that we included a specific note about this. For our trainers then, this is pr probably the most valuable addition to ORT. We added susceptibility as an acceptable synonym for vulnerability. While we didn't get rid of the term vulnerability altogether, and it is in fact the term that people taking the open fair certification exam will need to know in order to pass it, we now allow susceptibility to be used instead. So our accredited training courses can present the definition for vulnerability right at the very beginning, emphasize it's the term you need to know on the exam, but then use susceptibility, which is a little bit more intuitive throughout the remainder of the course. We also then focused on revising our forms of loss for clarity and concision. Previously in presenting these, we'd intermixed examples with the definitions, which for a new analyst is a little bit confusing. Now we focus on providing first the definitions and then examples to show or to allow the analyst to get an immediate understanding of the terms before getting a little bit more clarity about how they might be applied or what they actually mean in the real world. We then included the concept of loss flow, or sorry, in loss flow, we included the ideas of our primary loss event and secondary loss event. So our loss flow was in there before, but now we fully specify that it's the structure to decomposition of how losses materialize when a loss event occurs, going from that primary loss event to that secondary loss event due to the reactions of others. We then took a similar approach for loss factors as we did for our forms of loss, again, emphasizing the definition before attempting to provide examples of them. 
we also took the opportunity to actually integrate our confidentiality, integrity, or accessibility breaches into here, tying them specifically to those different threat loss factors and how the different actions a threat agent might take might cause a C, an I, or an I breach. We then also offered clarification for the distinction between threat competence and threat capability. Your threat competence is going to impact the size of loss magnitude once a loss occurs. So in other words, it's how good your threat agent is at making losses bigger, whereas your threat competence looks at how good your threat agent is at overcoming the asset's resistance strength. So simply put, threat competence affects loss magnitude, whereas threat capability will affect your loss event frequency. We then of course added, as I said before, those tables, those summary tables for both loss event frequency at the end of the loss event frequency section and for loss magnitude at the end of the loss magnitude section, providing definitions and units of measure for all of those key concepts. And I've included an example of one of these tables here. So we can see there those loss magnitude factors with primary loss magnitude and secondary loss magnitude separated out. We can see the description or definition of those terms, which also appear in the glossary of the document, as well as, as the units of measure. And we do this as well for our loss event frequency, but far more factors in that, so I kept with the shorter table for this presentation. What have we done for consistency then? Well, as I said at the beginning, we removed that quantitative example that tried to use qualitative scales to make the points about them. As I said, these had previously been interspersed all throughout ORA and had its own section in ORT, which didn't make the most sense to discuss a risk analysis example in a risk taxonomy standard. Instead, we're developing these examples separately in the new Open Fair Risk Analysis Example Guide. The intent here is that we'll be able to walk through a full qualitative risk analysis and provide its results before walking through an open fair quantitative version of that exact same example using the open groups open fair risk analysis spreadsheet tool. This will then allow us to show the differences and similarities between the two analyses and really show the value added from doing that quantitative analysis due to the differences and better precision useful precision of the quantitative results. This document is also going to have some discussion around presenting results, so include a couple of different examples of presenting results potentially within the NIST CSF or within ISO Guide 73, also taking into consideration the organization's risk threshold or management's risk tolerance. So this exam or this Example guide is also meant to be a living document, so we'll get a first version of it out, and then hopefully with some industry input, we'll be able to add to it and let it grow with some additional examples and some additional reports. We also made sure that we separated out and clarified the appendices in ORA and ORT. Previously, we'd had that business case appendix in both ORA and ORT, which really made more sense just in ORA, so that's where we left it. And we pulled it out of our ORT appendix. Instead, now in ORT, we have an appendix on risk taxonomy in the context of risk analysis, which looks at concerns regarding the complexity of the model, as well as the availability of data to support statistical analyses, the iterative nature of risk analyses, as well as some perspective discussion. The other ORT appendix then is on the practical use of open fair, and this looks at risk language gap, particularly in risk key risk concepts and on using open fair with other risk assessment frameworks. So what this means is that the body of these documents now are truly focused on being normative. The body of ORA and ORT are what the open fair risk analyst needs to know in order to pass their certification exam. The appendices then become informative. There's some additional guidance, some additional considerations that are useful, but not needed in order to get your open fair certification. We also then made a very big effort around clarifying terms and definitions across both ORA and ORT. So toward the end of the process, we sat down with both documents and walked through both of them looking for any small discrepancies in how we describe the different terms or how we use them, including even small stupid things like capitalization. 
we did this to make sure that there were no confusions about what was being discussed so that you didn't read ORT and then suddenly lose what you were trying to think of in LRA. We also attempted to update many of these terms and definitions to make them relevant to FAIR being an information risk standard. So we do still include the guidance and the clarity that FAIR can be used for really any type of risk analysis that you want to do. But for instance, we now tie our definition of asset to being the information, information system, or information system component. So we did focus making it on information risk, even if it is applicable elsewhere. We also added a definition for contact event. This, of course, had always been implicitly throughout both standards documents, since in order to have a contact frequency, you must have contact events. So now we have some consistency with contact events, threat events, and loss events. We updated our definition for controls to include both our loss prevention controls category and our loss mitigation controls category. You probably noticed those arrows across the top of that NIST CSF integration image earlier on. So our loss prevention controls category focuses on those controls that would reduce your loss event frequency and your loss mitigation controls category focuses on those controls that would produce your loss magnitude. So we do still keep the exact same four control categories within OpenFAIR, but now we've got a little bit more broader categories above them so that potentially trainers can discuss some more specific categories within those overarching themes. We then also added to the glossary definitions for loss flows and loss scenarios. Loss flow, as I said, being that structured decomposition of how losses materialize when a loss event occurs, and loss scenario being the story of the loss that forms a sentence from the perspective of a primary stakeholder. We relied on this idea of the loss scenario also throughout our open fair risk analysis process guide, so now we've added it formally into the standards. We also removed the example of a primary stakeholder from the actual definition of a primary stakeholder. And we did this consistently with some other definitions in the glossaries as well. So instead of trying to give the definition and the example in the glossary, now the glossary just provides the definition. And then we rely on the bodies of the documents in order to provide those examples of those terms and give a little bit more clarity about them. We also refined our definitions and discussions around resistance, strength, and threat capability, really focusing on the percentile aspect of them. And then we added a definition for our risk factors as well. And then of course, as I said, within the glossary itself too, we included a note that susceptibility is an acceptable synonym for vulnerability, but the term within the glossary still that risk analysts will need to know to get their open fair certification is vulnerability. So now let's look at how we actually went about adding some rigor to the standard. And some of these are some very simple mathematical equations, and some of them are meant to provide a little bit of help to analysts in estimating. So first and foremost, starting from the top and working down, we've got this equation that your loss event frequency is going to be less than or equal to your threat event frequency, which is less than or equal to your contact frequency. This, of course, had always been implicit, sort of an underlying assumption within this, because, of course, not every contact event will become a threat event, and not every threat event will become a loss event. So now we've actually formalized this and included it so that it hopefully provides some immediate clarity to somebody reading the document for the first time. We also provided a couple of different ways that you can estimate vulnerability. So if you happen to have good data on threat capability and resistance strength, you can estimate vulnerability directly as being the probability that TCAP is greater than RS, that your threat capability will exceed the asset's resistance strength. If, however, you don't have data on those things, or if you don't need to go that far into the risk taxonomy, you could instead estimate vulnerability indirectly by looking at, a, looking at it as the conditional probability of a loss event given that a threat event has occurred. So if you've got really good data already about both loss events and threat, threat events, but you want to include something about vulnerability, that's one way that you can go about estimating it. This might not be the most accurate way of doing it, but if you need to include this information and have nothing on TCAP or RS, it provides at least one way of estimating it. 
we then also formalized that loss magnitude is equal to the sum of your primary loss magnitude and your secondary loss magnitude, which are in turn equal to, for primary loss magnitude, the sum of those primary loss forms, and for secondary loss magnitude, the sum of those secondary loss forms. This also came with updating the tree. So you'll notice under loss magnitude, we now have PLM, primary loss magnitude, where before this had just been primary loss. So now this allows us to have primary loss magnitude and secondary loss rather than primary risk and secondary risk, which was potentially confusing. We then also finally added that equation for secondary loss event frequency, which we'd always said was a probability, not an actual frequency. So now we formalized it. So now we can say that your secondary loss event frequency is the conditional probability of a secondary loss given a primary loss. So this should hopefully, again, provide some immediate clarity to people reading the standard. So what are our next steps then? Well, the new version of the Open Fair Body of Knowledge completed company review on Monday, September 21st. Company review within the Open Group allows individuals from any member organization of the Open Group to submit change requests against the documents. The sponsoring working group, in this case, the work Open Fair Working Group in the Security Forum, then finds resolutions to these. It goes through another sanity review before getting executive review before publication. Once we have the new version of the Body of Knowledge published, we'll then look at updating the conformance requirements based on those changes, which will also complete company review. Before then, we work through updating the actual certification program itself based on changes to ORA, ORT, and the conformance requirements. At that point, we'll be able to work with our organizations offering accredited training courses to ensure that everything they've got is up to date. Thank you again very much for watching my presentation on updates to the Open Fair Standard and next steps to the certification program. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the conference.